Okay, I think we're up and running, are we? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Another hot, hot, hot stinker of a day today. Absolutely. I think we're scheduled for, what is it, 37 or something here today in Tokyo? I don't know. No big deal for Texans, as usual. But hot enough. <laughs> hot enough, hot enough. Okay, good morning, everybody. It is trash outside. Today is the first Monday, and I am finally learning the routine here. The first Monday and third Monday are the non-recyclable, non-processable. This is the, the one that they, this is broken glass, dead batteries, bits of fractured metal, stuff that doesn't fit into any of the other categories of the, of the garbage that's picked up regularly during the week here. And we have three bags outside, and I got, there was a message for me on my computer from Watanabe-san. There was a message on the door here when I got back from Ome last night. I went to Ome for the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and I got back last night, and there's a message taped to the door. Dave, don't forget. And I did, I did, I did. I put them outside. We've got three, and a, a bunch of them are the cans that are left over. We've got the epoxy glue we use to make our blocks. And no matter how much you pour and how much you pour, there's a bunch of epoxy stuff left inside the cans, and they don't fit in any other garbage cans, any other garbage category. So out they go today, out they go. So I did a good job. I'm reminded by the staff I did a good job. I had a nice weekend out in Ome, Saturday and Sunday. I know I, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't just playtime. I was working, but I spent lots of time in the river. The river is cool. The fish are there. They're happy. And as I said last stream, Next Saturday, we may be out there for a stream, for a stream stream. In fact, related to that, I got some advice I can ask about that. And I'll, I got some advice I can ask about that. HDMI cables. We've got the camera here outside, and I'm running an HDMI cable to the computer right here. It's two parts. It's the mini HD to a, to a junction and then junction to the computer. So I guess we're looking at eight meters or nine meters. I need 12 meters to be able to put a camera in the river. How far, how long can you run HDMI before the signal disappears? Can I run 12 meters? Any advice? I should just, you know, like Google it, but... Uh, Someone says it's nice to get away. It wasn't getting away. It was getting away from this place, but I had to make this. We <laughs> I was supposed to be doing this carving on the Thursday stream, and I had the tracing ready. The wood was ready or so. But when I got ready for the stream, I picked up the piece of wood and realized that it would be an absolute waste to use it for this. And the reason is, it's a piece of wood, it's the companion to the piece of wood that I used when I carved the octopus five years ago. I had a couple prepared, and this was left over. Actually, it goes back even longer than that. The piece of wood I used for the key block for the, for the chrysanthemum sprint, and for the octopus sprint, and then the third piece, this last one left over, I was thinking to use it for this. But I sat there Thursday morning before the stream and thought, I can't do this. It's a gorgeous, really hard, beautiful top to bottom wide piece of wood. And this key block is just a few lines. It would be a real waste, waste. So I changed up Thursday's plan. No, it's not a fiber optic, well, like whatever it is, the camera is outputting HDMI. I don't think there's any fiber optic involved there. So it's whatever, it's the mini HDMI there's three sizes of HDMI. It's the middle size one. I think it's called mini HDMI. That comes out of the camera. So I don't think we're talking fiber optics here. Someone's got a 25 foot running to your monitor. Okay, we'll give it a try then. We'll give it a try. But this will be a question mark above next week's stream. Anyway, Dave, forget that. The block, the block, the block. The block I had on Thursday was, as I said, 
it was just too good to destroy for using on the sprint. Now that sounds a bit that sounds a bit wrong. I'm sorry. What I meant was, I want to save that block for something when we really, really do need top to bottom delicate key lines. There's no rush to use it. It can wait for a couple more years if it has to wait. So what I did then, I cancelled out Thursday. I did something else on the Thursday stream. I don't even remember what we were doing. And then I went to Ome on Saturday and Sunday. And what I did was this. I found a good piece of cherry that wasn't big enough for this, but it was big enough for just this area. And I did the same thing that we talked about and you saw me do for the match label prints. I inlaid it. So we're not talking about a boxwood inlay here. We're talking about it. It's not boxwood inlaid on cherry. This is cherry inlaid on junk plywood. No, Annabelle, we're talking about top to bottom I mean, when there's detail all over the whole image. A couple of things. This jagged line here, this won't even be part of this key block. That's on one of the color blocks. The key block here is simply the outlines of her body and the boat and the undertone and her face. That's all. It's just this little area here. And to use the full block would, I felt, have been a waste. Anyway, try and keep my story straight here. Out in Ome, Saturday and Sunday, I got a piece of junk plywood that's big enough to do the job of making this print. Here's the back side. We can see it. It's just nothing. It's just it's on, not even plywood. It's on a core board or something. I'm going to put registration marks on it. And what I did was I inlaid into it a piece of cherry. I covered it up so that it wouldn't get dinged up while I was doing it. And we now have a piece of cherry that I had that was big enough. It's 190 by 2 something or other. And it will be big enough to do this area. That's what we're doing today. So not even, it's not an, I could have done that. I could have got a board with an external registration mark and just put this piece of cherry floating in the middle with empty space all around. I really don't like doing it that way. <clears throat> it's easier just to inlay the thing on the bottom. We will figure out where to put the registration marks here and we'll do it just like a normal print. And for those of you who haven't seen the thing, that's what's going to be happening. This is the size we're going to be doing this at. It's very slightly reduced from the original. And there's two reasons for that. One reason is wood, which we don't have. And second is legality. This print was issued back in the 1970s. And in order that our version has no confusion with that version, we are making ours a little bit smaller. So there can be no uh, accusations of forgery or anything like this. Someone's asking about you know, expansion contraction. There's really nothing that's going to be going on here. This base board, being plywood, doesn't expand much. The plywood, the, the cherry that I've inlaid into it is a piece of cherry ply. So there's really going to be next to no expansion contraction involved anywhere along the line here. <coughs> I used a router, I used a router, 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 router. I just keep forgetting I'm Canadian. I used a router. I did it upside down. I used a router table. We have a router table out in Ome. So to, to cut out this hole here, I did it upside down. I put this, the router came up out of the table, and I put this on top of it and cut away the space I need. I didn't use the router on top. It's a nice piece of cherry to show. It's got some little dots and dings. We're gonna have to make sure her face doesn't hit one of these dots. We'll have to, uh, in a minute, when we figure out where the registration marks are. <laughs> Okay, first let me cut this off. <clears throat> 
Now, unlike the inlay job that I did on that last video, this one is not scraped razor flat. Just a minute, let me get to the front of it. Hang on a sec, let me get this cut. One second. Okay, I haven't razored it flat. The cherry here actually is proud. It's about a half a millimeter sticking up. It was a question of the settings of the router, router and also how flat the back of this was. But uh, anyway, it's, it's, it's proud a little bit and it doesn't matter at all. Once we do the carving here, we will be shaving down the edges actually. The edges will be disappearing anyway and it will be, uh, it'll all be carved in the normal way. So. A lot of effort to get pieces of wood to carve on, whatever. That's, that's life for us, you know, that's life these days. Okay, now give me a minute while I figure out actually where we're going here, because I just estimated this when I was on it only yesterday. I didn't measure it as carefully as I should have, so one second, please. Yeah, it's going to have to go up. I think she's going to go there. Now this wood isn't perfect, so we've got to make sure that none of these dots fall in a critical area. So give me a second here to have a look at this. I think we're okay. I think the news is here, you know, reproduction of, oh, it's not Ogata Yoshio, it's Okada. Okada Yoshio is the artist's name. He died last year, in January last year. And after great, uh, great uh, tribulations and internet searching, and we didn't hire a private detective, but it almost got close to that. We found a representative of the family somebody who was able and authorized by the rest of the family to, uh, to speak for, for the estate. And we now have, uh, it's not secret, we've talked about it here a number of times now, we now have authorization from Okada Yoshio's family to reproduce any and all of his work in which the copyright is clear. There's a big if there. Some of his work, the copyright is not clear because when he worked as an illustrator, it wasn't sure that he had kept the copyright for some of the jobs or sold the copyright to the people who published the work. 
In those cases, because the copyright is vague, the family has said, we can't give you a clear go-ahead on this because we ourselves don't know if we actually do own those copyrights. But for everything in his over, everything in his work that does have a clear publication with C in the circle copyright notifications, we are authorized to use it in any way that we wish. We have a complete blank check from the family to use his work any way we wish. They trust me, uh, they know that myself and Okada-san did discuss this when he was alive, so they know this is not out of left field. And we have carte blanche to do anything with his work, publish series, publish single prints, publish collections, publish subscription sets, publish the old prints that were done in the Genji series. We can do whatever we want. Our problem, as always, is resources. Resources, resources. Well, of course, we're paying it. We have to pay royalties, of course. This is not, there's nothing free about this. We have to, uh, we have to put a project on the table. We have to send it to the man who is acting as agent for the family. He wants to look at the projects first and say, yeah, I think that's okay. It's going to be nominal. They're not really holding on to any, as I said, they, they trust me to, to do just normal common sense stuff. You know? And this isn't really our goal, to publish stuff from Okada-san that's been published already, but we needed a project to get going. Most of his work is extremely complex, extremely difficult, would require very large resources to produce, would be expensive at the end of the day. There are a lot of barriers here for us in doing just any old work from Okada Yoshi. So we picked this project because it was something that we could actually manage with the level of resources that we have here at Mokohankan right now. Once this is done and behind us and out of the way, we will then measure our resources, look at the market, look at what we can do, see what wood we can find, and then go for it. So this is a compromise. This, this particular project is a compromise, and I know that not everybody is happy with me to do, to do this. But you go to war with, what's the, what's the expression? You go to war with the army that you have or something. I forget the expression like that. It's a wave. What's not like to, about wave? What's not to like about waves? Mokohankan and waves. W waves and cats. Mokohankan seems indelibly linked to waves and cats. <laughs> okay. All right, we're going to paste this down. And I have used the five millimeter, uh, the five momme gampi. So we should, you know, we should get a peel. So John's got it. Surfer cats. Oh, oh, speaking of cats. Speaking of cats, you, you pause here just for a minute. Link, link, I got a link to show you. Some prints, there's two or three prints I have to show today. One I just learned out about a few minutes ago, but the other one, okay, now this is a Facebook page link. So maybe there will be lots of people here who are not happy about this, whatever, I can't help it, I know. I got this link. No, 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 this is not me, this is outside. John Amos has got a new print cooking. He put it up on, on his Facebook page. The link is here. This is a, a link posted by John Amos. And he's got a new print coming, and it looks like a ton of fun. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, why didn't he talk to me about this? Because I think I know where this print could possibly have been used. 
But also, I know why John didn't talk to me about this. It's so cute. <clears throat> John is his own man. He's a very competent printmaker. Very, very competent printmaker. Developing every month, every year. He's getting better and better and better at this. And the reason he didn't send this to my eight views of cat series, I'm laughing. I don't, he's not going to listen to this, but whatever, it doesn't matter. I, I could, even if he was here, it wouldn't matter. He knows that if he had sent it in for the eight cat series, my hand, editing hand, would have been heavier than he wants. John doesn't need to be edited. He is his own man. He will make prints the way he wants to make them. But he knows that Dave, as a publisher, has to have a, a certain style and a, and a house style and things that go on. So John chose not to try and get involved with the eight cats series. I'm sure for reasons like this, because as I said, he doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't want me editing it, which is I'm a hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent involved with this. So I felt a bit sad that John could have, I think, really co contributed really, really interesting stuff to the 8-cat series, but it's not to be, he's better off on his own. <laughs> but having said that, there is something really, really interesting technically about his print there. Uh, only the, the, for the general people it means nothing, but for the uh, for printmakers, John has done something really, really interesting with that print. And in fact, I, I looked at it and thought, what's he done, what's he done, what's he done? And I gave up. I had to write to him and say, okay, John, how did you do this? Because I could not figure out how he had done a certain effect on that. Excuse me a minute here, just to make this. I think we hit it just about right. Not too much glue. Not overly, not saturated. I think there's enough to keep this key block stuck down. I think we hit it just about right. Sometimes I get way too much glue on. No, the staining on the wall, no, I was simply at the key block. If you look closely at the key block to that print, some of it looks like it's really, really heavily scratch carved. There's lots of scratching on that key block. And John is very much a Yoshida fan. So I wrote to John and asked him, the key block here, it doesn't look like it's actually the traditional, you know, cutting lines into cherry wood key block. Are you maybe looking at the Yoshida family and, and using a metal block or something? Or what do you, how did you do this? You know, I was really, really curious. How did you do this? And he wrote back and did tell me how he did it, but I'm not sure if that information is public. So I'm going to have to keep quiet. But it's really, really interesting. The backing sheet is off. That's nothing to do with our peel. Uh, Taran san, uh, no, here. Okay, san, uh, give me a phone call after the stream, and I'll share John's information with you. Just I don't. John told me, but I don't know if it's public. So I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be a teaser or a jerk here. John did share some of his techniques, but I don't know if he's going to share that publicly. So I'm sorry.
Yes, I believe it's just going to be the key block that is going to have the inlay. I might do something similar for the black block for the hair. This print also has a block for her hair overlay. Should we try an angle here? Let's live dangerously. I think we're okay for now. Well, if that isn't, I don't know what number this is, but that's the largest peel I have ever done. Absolutely, that's the largest peel. Look at this. And we could use this again. We should sell it. I should put it in the shop. Used Gumpy from Dave's Twitch Dreams. Five dollars. That's a joke, but actually no joke in it. We could use this again. There it is. It's a piece of gumpy that was just wet, it was glued, it was peeled, it's abused. And look at the strength in it. This stuff is one of the glorious wonders of human achievement. I can't get enough of this. And th there's lots of stories about gumpy, you know. Okay, this is Japanese paper, rock, rock, rock. You've seen pictures, you've seen videos, you know how it's done. Most of our paper is made with mulberry fiber, kozo. Some paper is made with the plant called Mitsumata, another different fiber. That is a very short little fibers. The gampi is made with, it's got really long, thin fibers, and nobody yet has figured out how to cultivate it. And this is after hundreds of years. Japanese have been making paper with this stuff for, I don't know the history, a thousand years or more, and nobody has figured out a good way to cultivate it. I don't know the specific reason. They planted it dies and not enough water to... I, I don't know anything about the horticultural reasons for it. The mulberry fiber is planted in farms. It grows, it's farmed, it's grown. They know the details, the sun angle, the water angle, the drainage, the pH. They got that figured out. For Gampi, people went up into the mountains and scavenged the plants and came back down and made this paper. It's insane. It's insane. I mean, there's no real need for it these days, but that will be another one on the list of research projects that need to get done in this field, you know. Although, honestly speaking, I suppose, uh, given Japanese paper making over the centuries, that particular one, how to grow gampi, how to cultivate gampi, that must have been uh, researched to death over the centuries in Japan. Probably these days not so much, because there's no need for this paper these days. Anyway, it's there. It's there as a project. So fly fishers got it maybe when it was so readily available, the motivation for cultivation wasn't there, and now there's, there's no need for it so much, so the motivation is even less. I don't know the background story here. All I know is that I have read on the internet that you can't cultivate gum people. After all these years, after all this delay, ready to go. Ready to go. Okada-san and I go back. I first met him in 1990. I met him in the winter of 1990. He visited my house. He had seen a newspaper ad about an exhibition I was having about the poet's prints. He came to my house to visit me. We've talked about this in the video because I had written to him years ago. We had a good, 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 good chat. And we agreed that one day, we would work together. And that was in the spring of 1990. We agreed that one day we would work together. Never happened. I got kind of busy. A lot of stuff happened. And then last year in January, he died. And that was that. It would have been so cool to do original work with him, for him to draw stuff for us to publish at Mokohanka. That would have been so cool. And we're going to go for it. He's got tons and tons of stuff. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of, of images out there of his. And we were going to real publish something that we could do. After this is out of the way, 
there's a sort of two approaches I'm going to take. One is to do some spectacular stuff, the kind of prints that just, we've got to make something spectacular. But also, uh, in the practical sense, we want to make some prints, you know, get a lot of stuff out into the market. And for that, we are going to be, I don't know, doing subscriptions, which means taking some of his images, adapting, editing them, making smaller versions, and doing a series of 12 prints throughout the year. We'll do a subscription series. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Sketchbooks, there are a few sketchbooks. There's not much. Apparently, Okada-san didn't do that sort of thing. And the, the man who is our contact with the family is his nephew. And uh, I guess they weren't really, really good buddies. Okada-san was kind of separated from a lot of his family during life. And the nephew is really interested in this. He really wants to help move this forward. But he said there isn't a lot of material. There's no storehouse full of leftover stuff and sketchbooks and whatever. Because Okada-san was an illustrator, for the most part, the things that he actually drew went out to publishing companies who then got their camera up, took a picture of the thing, put it in their magazine, and the thing itself got tossed aside. That's how, I mean, that's, how that's not just Japan. Illustration, to quite a large extent, that's how illustration works. You hand in the job and it's done. These days in digital, I don't, I don't know how it works, but in the old days, there would be this thing that was painted or whatever with maybe registration marks or something. It would go to a publishing company. They would shoot it and toss it aside. Absolutely toss it aside. So not a lot of his original work, the things that he actually painted, the things that he painted and touched with his brush, very little of that survives. Yeah, John, John, I'm on it, I'm on it. That's why I'm... I'm Thank you, thank you. Yeah, you know, Okada's Genji prints, so they, they were maybe the first or among the first, I can't remember. I bought a couple of prints from Adachi. I brought that Okada Yoshio set. Whether it was the first print or among the first prints, I don't know. But yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's sharpen. Okay, while I'm doing this, there's something else that came up this morning. Just a few minutes before the stream started this morning, I know one of our mods, Vivid KP, who is a printmaker in her own right. Vivid KP, who actually, she's coming to Japan sometime quite soon to visit, to visit Terry McKenna's place. Vivid KP told us here in the, in the stream that she has a new print ready. Vivid San, can you put that link up again, please? And in the meantime, this morning, as soon as I saw that print, I stole it from the internet. I put a copy on my desktop, and we have here. This is the latest and greatest print from the lady in the stream here who is Vivid KP, one of our mods. Look at this. She's got cred here as a printmaker, as a mod for a printmaking stream. This lady has cred. Vivid San, questions? Kitaro paper or Iwano paper? What's the paper? What's the paper? Looking by the borders on the outside, it would look like Kitaro paper, but looking by the smooth color, it looks like Iwano paper. So I don't know. In either case, it's very, very, very nicely done. Beautifully done. She says, Kitaro, you'll have to teach us how to use that when you're here. When you're here, talk to Sugasan, bring this and show Sugasan and have an arm wrestle, because Sugasan is adamant that we cannot use this paper. <laughs> so, <laughs> I got some questions, I got some questions. Gradations, the mountain ranges, distant mountain ranges, there's one on the right and one on the left. The mountain range on the right does have a gradation. Someone out there has a very, very, very tiny brush. Extremely difficult work to do. Is there also a gradation on the mountain on the left? And if so, how did you do that? Or is that carved? Is there a thin line carved at the top of that mountain?
what's happening at the top of the mountains. Oh, I see, maybe, or there's an outline on both mountains, the left one and the right one. There's an overlap with the blue that makes it a line. Okay, I got you, I got you. Blue meaning the blue-gray distant mountain. All right, okay, I've got you. Very nice job. Nothing to, that I would even remotely criticize. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful print. Top right-hand corner, the white cloud disappears to the white border. Should there have been something there? I don't know. Beautiful print. I can't wait to see this in person. Bring this so that Suga-san can see this. And I really, really, really want to talk to you about, about the Kitaro, about the Kitaro paper. Karen san, beautiful job. Congratulations. Fabulous. A bunch of people show us their prints on this stream, but my God, there's no question. And I'm not, you know, this is a beautiful, beautiful professional job. Also, can I ask, there's a little number in the corner, 24, but it doesn't say 24 out of 50, 24 out of 100, 24 out of 1,000. So you're just numbering on the way up, open edition. <laughs> the print needs a cat. <laughs> there's a cat in there. I'm sure there's cats in the desert somewhere. Beautiful, beautiful work. I, I have the little tiny feeling of pride because a little bit of what you're doing, you learn from watching what we're doing, so that's fine. So I have a tiny 1% ownership pride in this. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Open edition, printed 32, but only 24. So later there will be 25, 50 more. You're pushing all Dave's buttons here. Absolutely. You're pushing Dave's buttons. Anyway, thank you very much, Karen San. Good. And also, please, I think I've said this to you before, you know, you're really, really polite. This is our stream here, and you don't push your own work and stuff. But like partway along here, when you had the blocks ready or when you're doing test printing, show us this stuff, please. I know, I know you're so polite. You don't want to take try and horn in on Dave's stream, but that's not how we roll here. Please, 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 show us this stuff. Karen was telling us that she's going to do the residency thing with Terry McKenna, but it's from someone like me who looks at this. Uh, Karen can make a print like that. Terry all, is also making prints that are sort of something similar to this. Uh, the idea that Karen is going up there to learn from Terry, I don't know. I think they're just going to chat, drink beer, and hang out, I think, I guess. I don't think Terry can teach you much, whatever. I'm not dissing Terry. He's a nice printmaker in his own right, but if you've got to that level, whatever, the residency is just going to be hanging out and drinking beer, I think, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> 
It's the same when Karen visited here a few years ago, you know. We're not teaching her anything. She's not our student at all. She's a printmaker, but uh, sharing ideas back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, also, I think, too, Terry's not the kind of guy who would look at that and say, okay, yeah, very nice young, young lady, okay, now let's make it really better. Terry would not do that. He's obviously going to look at this and say, shit, why are you here? Let's talk about how we can do some different things. So... Soka, hero's anniversary. Hey, Tom 1060's got it. Today is the anniversary of the Kickstarter campaign. Hey, look at that. I had forgotten about it. <laughs> Out of all the preparation, half a year ago I remembered. I got it all ready. And then today I forget. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Today is the 10th anniversary of the Ukiwe Heroes Kickstarter campaign. The video is still online. video was fun actually to watch what might be fun is to link to that hang on a sec let me see if I had it ready the other day if I search for Kickstarter there it is got it that's the link to the original Kickstarter campaign and the video is there and it's good fun actually it's not my video it's Jed's video at, at the beginning there Jed and I were just starting up and I wasn't making videos and stuff and I think the video starts there hi my name's Jed Henry and I'm a real nerd or something like this I forget when it starts <laughs> Some says it's also a year <coughs> since the last Great Wave video, is it? I don't keep track of that sort of stuff. <coughs> That's funny because today, Sugasan is bringing me... She, did you see Sugasan go upstairs at the beginning of the stream here? Maybe that was a few seconds before we went online. As we speak right now, Sugasan is upstairs and she is sorting through her current batch of 60 Great Waves. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> she just finished them up on a Friday, put them in the drying boards. So today she is, brought, she is bringing them out of the drying boards. She's sorting them out. She's going to put them in two stacks. There'll be one or two or three good ones on top, then 57 on the bottom, which will be, I'm sorry, David, I failed. That's the way she rolls. <laughs> and of course, it's actually the other way around. So, so, so. So I will be getting 60 more great waves today, which means Ayano-san, probably later this afternoon, after I've had a chance to see and check these prints, Ayano-san will be notifying the top, whatever, 50 or 60 people on the waiting list are going to get notified later this afternoon that Great Waves are back, or at least that their time has come. As far as wood, we have the wood set aside. 
We have the wood ready. It's been seasoning, curing, drying. The key block is already ready and mounted. And the wood that we will be using for the color blocks is not mounted, but the wood itself is set aside and drying. It's antique wood. Wood from, we think, from about the 1950s or 60s that was used for some fan prints in Kyoto. And they used very, very, very nice, hard, good bunch of wood. And when I saw it some years back on Yahoo Auction, uh, we set it aside. So the wood for the next Great Wave version is ready and set aside. The idea is not me. I've done mine. John San is going to carve it. But he is really, really, really busy just with our normal, normal life. Someone says you won't live long enough to see Dave Prince in museums. It's already happening if you're in... Uh, Hamburg, we're in there. Jed and I are in there. They bought all the Ukiwe Heroes prints some years back. I forget the name of the big museum. Uh, whoever's there in Hamburg, it's the big museum. It takes up a city block. I forget the name of the place. They have our complete collection in there. And Jed also, they don't buy from me, they buy them from Jed. Museums around the world have been buying Ukiwe Heroes prints. We are actually in museums. Oh, yo, 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 yo. I don't know if they're on display. The museum owns them. I don't know if they're always on display. I'm sorry, I don't know. Have I thought about making a YouTube video? Hamburger Kunsthalle. That doesn't sound right, no. That doesn't sound right, I'm sorry. Just a minute. That doesn't sound right. It's the, uh, my German, I can't pronounce this. Museum für Kunst und Gewerbe. Museum for Arts and Crafts, is that what it is? I'm sorry, I don't know. That's the place that they're in. They bought the whole collection. So it's not the Kunsthalle. Somebody can do this? Kunst und Gewerbe. I don't know. That's where they are. And they had, it would have been three or four years ago, they had an exhibition of Japanese manga and Japanese art and European art. Yeah, Kunst is art. I know, this is it. So, so this is it. That's the place. That's the place. I, know, I don't know the full name, but it's there. Kunst und Gewerbe. They have all of our Ukiwe Heroes prints. Whether they're on display or not, I don't know. How's the time? 8.48. Okay, where do we start? We're not going to start with the face. The surfboard lines are long. They're a bit scary for me. Where do we start? It's been so long that I've done this. Let's just start in the middle. Follow the rule. Well, now what I could do is I could start with the hairlines. These are not hair. These are underneath underlines for the hair. The hair is going to be under gray on the key block, and then there will be a black hair block on top of this. So this will be a good safe place for me to start because these lines actually won't appear in the finished print. The lines in this hair will be blotted out later. Start with the heel, that's too visible. Too visible, it's also a curve on the inside. No, I'm scared. <laughs> It's not WD-40, it's Camellia Oil. Yeah, I got it. Hoksai X Manga was the exhibit. There's an article about it in German. They published a, a bilingual book about the exhibition. Now we find out what this block is actually going to be like. It helps put some light. 
and get the camera ready. We now find out if this piece of wood really is what I had hoped. Let's see. How do I decide what to carve first? The stuff that's the least scary. Remember, I haven't carved in weeks. I don't remember. I mean, back when I was really a craftsman, doing this all the time, it didn't matter. Just pick up the block and whack at it. But now I'm rusty. I'm always, always, always rusty. So it's going to take some time for me to get back to this. There's no way I'm going to touch the face just yet. Wood is, I think, good. I think it's a little, it's not as hard as I would like, but it does seem to have some body. It's nowhere near up to the level of our Great Wave key block, you know, the one that's lasted for 3,000 copies. There's no way this is going to last that long, but I don't think we have a need for that. This print will do a nicely part of our catalog, but it won't be uh, it won't be selling, you know, 3,000 copies, I don't think. We'll see. Taransan, I see your name here. I see you're in the stream this morning. And uh, how's it going? The work? Is it? Uh, uh, are you still sitting there looking at the block, thinking about the approach, or have you started? Or how's it going? And in your case too. Okay. <laughs> Five thousand six hundred and seventy-two. I don't know. We laugh about that way thing, but it is really, really frustrating. You know? It's frustrating for a number of reasons. It's frustrating to to have a product that so many people want and yet be unable to deliver it. It's just unhappiness all around, whereas it should be just you know endless streams of happy customers is what should be. But uh, it's just not possible to make that many of them. You know? So it's frustrating you know, for us the wave instead of what could be a real pleasurable part of our business the wave kind of has become a burden to our business you know. can't be helped I think it's you know, a little bit it's sort of analogous to the idea of a, a, a grade B pop star or something this like there's these people that who are one hit wonders we talk about you know people that, that had a band back in the 1970s or something they had a hit back then and they kept going through the 80s and 90s but never had another hit. So you've got this person like he's about my age and he had a hit back years ago when he was younger. And that's all that anybody ever wants to see these days. <laughs> it's not a perfect analogy because that's not, you know, our life. We are making good new prints all the time. So it's not a completely good analogy, but there is this thing that casts its shadow over all of our activities and that's our big hit, our greatest hit. And it's okay, I'm, I'm laughing as I say this, because it's all right, because we do have an ongoing, thriving, modern business as well. If the only thing anybody ever wanted to buy was our hit, our greatest hit, then we'd be in trouble. If we were making new prints and nobody wanted it, and how about the new one, here's our new cats, and nobody wants it. If that was the case, then we would be, I, I wouldn't be doing it, I would have given up long ago. So it's not a good analogy, because we do have a greatest hit, but also people are enjoying and appreciating our new work. So it's not really a valid, uh, valid analogy, I guess. I 
And the funny, funny, funny thing about this for me, going back over the years, you know, I started that Poets Project back in 1989, you know, the 10 years to make the Poets Print, whatever. This is long before Mokohankan, nothing to do with Mokohankan. I made that print set, started in 1989, it took 10 years to get to 1998. The media, everything, exhibitions, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. This was clearly Dave's greatest hit. And people said so at the time. What are you going to do, man? Your life work, fabulous to see it's all done, you know. And I'm like, I was like 45 or something, like, my life work, what do you mean? And I think if I'd have been a different character, I could have. I could have coasted on that. We could have had annual exhibitions. We could have taken it on tour, blah, 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 blah. But I didn't. I put it behind me and ignored it and got on to something else. And if anything, that's the thing that could have been my greatest hit. Now it's forgotten. Nobody even knows about it. Most of the people who are watching this and are seeing our work don't even know about that. This is a nice piece of wood. I am going to enjoy this. You better enjoy it too, because you're going to be seeing a lot of it next little while. <laughs> so. Is Taran-san here? Has he started? I, I can't. They're all thin tasty lines, so it's all fun, fun, fun. So Taran-san is busy. Taran, put some video up or something, you know? I know Taran-san has started making video, he said, but he's the same thing as me. The perfect is the enemy of the good. It's exactly the same problem. He doesn't want to put up until it's just, everything's just right. Okay, show and tell today, what we've got is, uh, I brought back a folder with me from home. We still have tons of stuff for show and tell, you know. The black folder is actually still sitting here. Joe Sheridan is peacefully waiting his turn at bat here. The black folder is still there. And uh, there's endless, endless small prints keep pouring in from Yahoo Auctions every day. That guy who puts up all those match labels, every day he puts some up. Every day I pass on some, I buy some, I pass on some, I buy some. So every day we've got new match table prints coming in here. And then I brought a folder from Ome with me last night when I came back, which has got some prints of a type that we've never seen before. So that might be what we should look at today on show and tell. And then this morning we got an early delivery. I was just back from the pool this morning, getting outside, I was putting that garbage outside when we got a delivery from uh, the, the Black Cat service. And he had tried to deliver it yesterday, and I wasn't here because I was in Ome. So he made a special trip this morning to bring it, and it's sitting on my bench here. And it's from Kubota-san. And Kubota-san. Hello, Anna-san. Hello, hello, hello. It's from Kubota-san. And yesterday was the last day of the month. So, there should be people out there who know what is in this box. I think there's people out there who should know what's in this box. Hmm? No, you're not. Oh, come, 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 No, no, I'm talking about Kubota-san's box. I'm going to open it in a few minutes. I'm going to open it at show and tell time. So. How was your weekend? Ah, uh, I went to this uh, um, long-term event held in Chiyodaku, and then what surprised me most was um, half population in this that in the in the Chiyoda area. 
Foreigners. Foreigners, yeah, yeah. Hi. People Surprise. that are living here. Totally surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All Japanese people like, so, so. wow, because they were like yeah. astonished, yeah. and they yeah. were saying, come on, come on. Okay. <laughs> they were, they were saying, these are, these are. You think people who are living in Japan? You think, or these are business I'm visitors? Sure maybe half of them are living in Japan, yeah. and half of them. The business work. visitors thing. Yeah, so, so, business, so, yeah. So we had people on over the weekend too from so Canada. They so they were surprised. So. The, the common language, yeah. the, the most yeah. spoken language yeah. in that yeah. area, yeah. was yeah. English. Yeah. So like Japanese people were like, eh, hey, nice. But that too, because it was an event, it was a dento nantuka event but for still sure. Still, it's, so. I don't know, it's yeah. even more than before COVID. Yeah. Nobody can see. I see. Ah, what do you mean? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, so. so, 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 so. Uh, where were you? Somebody's asking, where were you? This is where? Chiyoda. Chiyoda, actually. Chiyoda, near the, uh, what is near the palace, palace, you mean? Yeah, near the palace, oh, okay. yeah. What was the event? Lanterns? Lanterns, uh, yeah. No, just just for, I, I think it's basically bon. for praying for those people who bon. died in the, yeah, in the yeah, war. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ah, Soka Soka. So, because it's close to Yasukuni Shrine, right? Ah, what was the date? 31st. That date's coming up to show later it's on. Coming that, on yeah, 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 okay. Anyways, yeah, that was the most surprising mm -hmm. thing over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your hot coffee, right? Hot coffee, yeah. She's becoming a convert. They don't believe me, but she's becoming a convert. Small size. Small size, yeah. That's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Convert, man, it's good. I've been trying to convince everybody. It's hot, hot, hot. Don't drink slugs of cold water. I've been trying to tell people. Ah, get a so coffee, so leave it there on your desk. It's got to be a bit cool. Drinking super hot coffee is no fun, but let mm -hmm. it get a bit, bit done, all lukewarm, mm -hmm. and sip it, sip it, sip it over an hour. Mm -hmm. It's the perfect way. Plus, of course, water to, uh -uh. to top up. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm drinking iced coffee in the morning. Mm -hmm. during, the night, uh, during the day. Mm. Whatever. There's, there's people here, a couple of staff upstairs, they're drinking cold water and they don't feel good, they're not happy, they're not healthy, and I'm convinced. Drink <laughs> warm tea! <laughs> Do you um, remember once that, you know, I was drinking, it wasn't even cold water, lukewarm water, and I got stomach ache, so I need to leave. Okay, I don't remember, but yeah. yeah you I'm don't remember this guy? Right, okay. uh, I got really, really yeah. sick. Whatever. People are laughing at me about this. You don't drink hot liquids, and so you do. Ask <laughs> India. That's how they do it in India. You know, whatever. <laughs> old guy here. Old guy. <laughs> a cold beer in the evening. Yes. I and mean, we need water during the day. But drinking ice water during the day is. Damn it, this guy. Oh, it's the first. Okay. The first. I didn't look. I didn't pre-flight. So <laughs> let's have a pr careful pre-flight together. <laughs> okay. Let's have a careful pre-flight. <laughs> so, okay. All right, I'll go upstairs. So I'm saying hot tea, that's what nomads in the Sahara Desert drink. British do it, in India they do it. And I'm not saying super hot, <laughs> well, can't bear it. Just you get a hot tea or coffee, there it is. Let it go a little bit lukewarm and sip it over the next couple of hours. And it's we're perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Do I ever have to beg the ladies to leave you alone and let you work? It's what weekends are for. It's what 8 o'clock is for. They all disappear at 8 o'clock or so. They're not so bad. These ladies are competent and it's a balance between how much to do on their own and how much to check with me first. You may have heard the end of the conversation here today. She, it's the first of the month, so all the subscription billing happens. It's an automated process, but we do want to manually check everything first before we push the button to make sure the data is okay. Data gets out of order, you know, so we've got to do it. But we've got this thing is how much to leave her to do it and how much for me to come in and look over her shoulder. And she's still new here. And I've been letting her have a free hand as much as possible, but she is actually still a bit new, and there have been whatever. We don't need to go there, but whatever. Last week, whatever. So today she's nervous, and she is going to make sure that I work together with her today to avoid something like what happened last week. So anyway, it doesn't matter. She is very, very competent, but she is still a tad new, that's all. In Christ, we have 40 years of history of doing things a certain way here, and she's only been here three or four months, so. But am I happy with her and what Nabisan? Boy, oh boy, I could not be happier. They are fabulous, fabulous people to have here. 
we found some real winners, you know. If she's listening or not, I don't know, I don't care, it doesn't matter. She knows. We found some real winners. Those two ladies, I and son and whatnot, they're like, they're like the future of this business, you know. Not on the production side, but on the organization side. Someone says, builder's tea. So, and I remember that from Britain. After dropping out of university, you know, I went back to England for a year and I bummed around. I did busking in front of the Royal Festival Hall. I, I worked as a day laborer through that winter. When it got too cold and rainy to do busking, I worked as a day laborer. And I worked on all kinds of building sites and stuff like this. And you're outside and well, whatever. Hot tea, hot tea, hot tea. Maybe just it's the British genes there, I don't know. I'm not actually a tea fan. <laughs> Dave, being Canadian, do you follow hockey at all? I really am sorry, I don't. When I was there this last spring, when I was there over to be part of the crew that was uh, caring for my mother, the uh, playoffs and stuff were getting started, and my brother was big into this. After, after my brother got there, towards the end of my visit there, my brother arrived from Germany, and he and I stayed together at my parents' uh, apartment, which is now, you know, it's the family apartment now. He and I stay there, and he's big in sports. Every evening, my brother just it's it's uh, it's uh, snooker or whatever, whatever, whatever. A lot of European stuff that he watches. I don't think he watches soccer slash football. But also, he when he was there, it was uh, playoff time. So he every evening after we'd been at the hospital with my mother, we uh, chilled out at the apartment there, and he put up the uh, he put up the NHL, the playoffs. And they let, let it run during the room, and uh, I was, you know, I sat there, watched, drank a beer, and we had dinner and watching the playoffs. And I was astonished. I had no idea. If you had just asked Dave, NHL hockey, what was it like in the old days and the, the modern days? And Dave, without knowing anything in real life, would have said, oh, "On the old days, it was all about the skill, and these days, modern days, it's all about the fighting and just who can punch the other guys out." That's the image I had up to about six months ago. Say it louder. They started accepting packages for Australia. E-packet, small packet, EMS. The post office. Post Today. Office. Yes. August 1st. Australia. It's open. E-packet. Yabba dabba do. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just updated it. Actually, uh, July 29th that they updated yeah, yeah, the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did our system catch out this morning? It came to in the mail? Oh, I just... I haven't checked yet. I haven't checked it yet. Yay! Okay, pop the beer. Well, not, <laughs> not just yet. Let's wait a little bit longer. Let's get some beer. All right, all right, all right, all right. But how long is this going to be okay for? Or whatever. Roll, 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 roll. Yeah. Big news, big news, big news, man. The, the, the UPS, DHL, FedEx, UGX, you, you don't want to, I don't want to go there. You don't want to know. You don't want to know what she and the gang have been up to for the past year. You don't want to know. 
Anyway, the hockey thing, you know, we got a few minutes. The hockey thing, it turned out, I, as those of you who know already know about this, there may have been something in the 1980s, whatever, where fighting was a big deal. It ain't like that anymore. And the skill set, the skills that I saw on display with my brother watching the, some of the games here this year were beyond belief beyond belief. You couldn't be more wrong the image I had in my day, the 1950s and 60s, the guy knew how to stick handle and they could really do it. These days it's just goons. This is not what's happening. The skill sets were beyond belief. I just watched stuff there that I could not believe human beings were doing this. Just whatever. If you know, you know, you are. You don't need Dave here to tell you what it's about. If, if you already know about this, you know. The skill set we saw was beyond belief. And absolutely, if I were, were back there in Canada now, if I were living in Canada now, I would want to see more of that. I would want to be part of it. I could not believe what we saw. There was replays, and you look at the replay, and like, that didn't happen. That couldn't happen. There's no way anybody could move that quickly. Anybody could react that quickly. So I apologize to the NHL that all these last 20 years or so I have had a completely incorrect, incorrect uh, image in my mind. And whatever, maybe they built that image so I can't really blame myself. But uh, my God, the skill sets we saw this spring. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. So those of you now over in North America, how anybody could be interested in any other sport, I can't imagine. Football, beat them up, whatever. I mean, hockey, the modern level of hockey is incredible, incredible. I can't imagine going live though, because it's live and like what did we just see? I don't know, it's too fast to see. So it makes sense at home with the TV and the replay and they can play it again and watch what that guy actually did and then you can see it, but live, Maybe a younger man can follow it, but I certainly can't. The sprint is going to be a delight, an absolute delight to carve, you know, every line. This is Okada-san's thing, you know. You may not like the sexism here, you may not like his particular tastes in women, whatever, <clears throat> but most of my interest in his work, it's the curves, it's the lines. Back in the old Ukiyo-e days, the Utamaros and whatever, every curve, every line was just juicy, it just flowed and curved and, and Okada-san could do that. And he was back in the 70s, they were calling him the Utamaro of the 20th century or whatever it was. You know, they had phrases like this, the new Utamaro, someone to come and take over Utamaro's mantle. This was what they were talking about him in the 1970s and 80s. And this is what it was, it's curves. I don't really care about this design, it doesn't matter. From Dave's point of view, it's the way he just gets all of these curves to work. And you talk about curvy women, whatever, so that became a, that became a theme for him, okay, but you know. And then the waves, you know, the waves we're gonna have here, once we pop up this image, it's all the, you know, the, the waves in the background are the same thing, you know. Curves and curves and curves. So, Karen's got it. The curves in the water are going to be very satisfying. And that's what this guy, that's the appeal. Anyway, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, we have a show and tell, as I said. But before the show and tell, I want to crack that box. 
Can I do this without dropping it on the floor? This is the box that Kubota-san attempted to deliver yesterday. He sent it to me, and we were nominally supposed to get this yesterday. The Takibin guy tried to bring it. I wasn't here, which is really, really, really unusual that there's nobody here on any given day. But it doesn't matter. They brought it back the next day. So do you, did somebody get this? What's in here? Kubota-san desperately tried to get it to me by the last day of the month. You know what's in here? Chickenmeister. It's the October Prince. Uh, August. It's the August Prince. Today's August 1st. So yeah, we are late. These are supposed to be mailed today. Ayano-san is going to be mailing the invoices this morning. Unfortunately, Kabuta-san has sealed this so well, we're not going to be able to ship prints this month. It's going to take me a month to get in the box. Literally, it's going to take me a month to get in the box. I know, careful with the cutter. I know, been there, done that, absolutely. How do we get in this box? Relax, I am really nervous about this. Relax, relax, relax. No cutter, let's just go manually. What has he done? Exhausted. And it's white green tape. the sun. supposed to see this. If you're a subscriber, you got two choices. Turn it off <laughs> and wait for your package to arrive. <laughs> or close your eyes if you're a subscriber. Let's show them, but if you're a subscriber, you got your choice. If you want the surprise when you get the package, then close the stream now. Five, four, three, two, <laughs> One.
use the scale. And Kubota-san, this time he's done something a little bit different. We don't normally do this. This year's subscription series, so far, they've been printed by, each one has been printed by three people upstairs. It's either Dei-chan and Ishikawa-san and Suga-san, or it's Suga-san and Dei-chan and Ishikawa-san. They go round, they do a hundred or hundred or hundred each or so. This time, we were really running out of time. I was so late with the carving. It's been building up month by month by month. By the time I finished the blocks and got them up there, for one person to do 100, next person, next person, it wasn't working schedule-wise. They also have their summer holidays. Just then, Kubota-san said, hey, I finished the next job a bit early, my previous job a bit early, got something I can do maybe by the end of the month or something. And he wanted a job just to finish within the month. I looked at those blocks and I looked at Kubota-san and I thought, why not give the whole thing, 150 sheets of paper to Kubota-san and let him print up the entire edition of 300 all by himself. None of the printers here can do that. There's 300 copies of the prints here. He sits back gets his block ready, puts the TV on, gets his paper ready, and away he goes. And he is an absolute machine. You've heard me talk about this before. He did do a proof. I went over to his house twice. I took the blocks and paper to his house, left it with him for a day, and two days later, I got on the train and went back there. It's a two-hour ride to get to his place. This is no picnic two-hour ride to get to his place. His wife is immunocompromised, no guests. He doesn't come out of the house, nobody comes in. We sat outside in front of his house, masked up, looking at the print, looking at the paper, looking at the samples he had made. And I'm saying, no, I want the green a bit different, I want this a bit different, I want this a bit different. And the two of us worked over it, and then I turned around and walked away and left him with it. And that would be about 10 days or so ago. And here they are. He delivered them yesterday on time, on schedule. And so we don't need to do any Kubota embossing this time. And we have our little tiny Easter egg here. And for him, this is, this is nothing. This is nothing. If we had said, I need 300 Oban size prints, great waves in 10 days, that would be too much. So he's watching the, he's watching the baseball game or, or watching melodramas on TV. You tell me. I don't even know what he watches. Not my business. He just watches TV all day. For those of you who don't know, this is the Aomori Nebuta Matsuri, Nebuta Matsuri or Nebuta Matsuri. And we have three people immortalized as floats from the Aomori Matsuri. And Kubota-san this time saved our ass. Bingo. August 1st on time. They've already started printing the September prints. And you think these are nice. The September prints, I, I'm teasing and I don't care. The September prints are going to. You can forget ever, ever, ever wearing socks again in the rest of your life. You're not going to need socks ever again. We have destroyed the idea of socks. Okay, I brought some prints from Ome. Let's just, I don't want to show them all to you because I want to spread them out over some period. Let's just grab three. What time is it? It's 25. We've only got a couple of minutes anyway. So I'll tell you what, let me just grab two of these for now. I have a whole folder of these. We'll look at some more in the next show and tell. But for today, right now, these came to me from the dealer network. These are not part of our flea market. These are not going to be for sale. These are part of my own personal, personal collection. And we have today here a couple of reproductions of Hashira-e. 
these are reproductions of an original print. We've seen some before on this. If you imagine a post in a Japanese house, it's like if you were, it would be a four by four if it was in Western technology. So if you imagine these prints as being not the width you see here, if you imagine them as being four inches wide, like a four by four and tall, they wouldn't fit on the screen here. So this is a half size reproduction. The original would have been about four inches wide, about the span of my hand, and correspondingly taller. And they are called hashira-e, pictures for putting on posts, because Japanese houses didn't have wall space and frames. Any pictures being stuck on a wall in Japan would have been stuck on fusuma doors, you know, the sliding doors that go between rooms. These are reproductions of Hashira. And this, this one is Isoda, they're both, they're both by Kod Yusai, who specialized in this work. And if you think you have a design taste sense, you can maybe design something very well. You've got a composition, you can make it fit. In the West, I think composition to a large extent is done by what they call the golden ratio, right? There's a certain, it's not three by two, but it's a similar kind of ratio or something that seems to fit. You try composing an image that fits in a eight to one. It's eight tall and one wide, and you fit something into that package and have it make sense. And well, here we go. A tree up above. We have shakuhachi and we have komuso baskets. There's a story here which I am supposed to know, which I don't remember. I'm sorry. There's a story here. I don't know who these characters are. I am supposed to know. And if I had looked at this thing five minutes in advance, we could have zoomed it. The mark here is a publisher's mark, this little squiggly mark at the bottom. This tells us that this is a print that was produced as a reproduction by Hashiguchi Goyo. He had a company he called Yamato Nishikie, Japanese multicolored ukiyo-e prints. And he published reproductions of all kinds of them. They're not the most wonderful high quality reproductions, but they're good. So this is Hashiguchi Goyo before he became noted as an artist in his own right. That was his first uh, job slash business was publishing reproductions of ukiyo-e and that little circular thing I don't know what it says actually inside whether it's letters or not I really don't know I'm sorry but that is his mark it kind of looks like an X I can't write so I'm gonna write an X but his his name was Hashiguchi Goyo and I don't know what the squiggle means and the one below it, it's an atomic attack, right? I don't know about that. <laughs> and this is classic Koryusai. Now these are not the best, best ever reproductions. We've got a couple of issues with them. Can't find my pointer. Where's my pointer? My poker. The hair here. It's too straight. The hairs are finely carved, but the edge of them should have been feathered off more. So the edge of the lines here is too strong. It looks like Dave when he was not yet good enough at doing this. We see it on this one as well. Look at this. We shouldn't see such a sharp, straight line here. Now give me these blocks and I'll finish them off properly. <laughs> They're nicely done. It's not perfect. There's misregistrations here and there. His work, Yamato Nishike, it's B-level work. It's not A-level work. It's on a, I'll have my tongue cut out for saying that because Hashiguchi Goyo is a god in the Japanese world of ukiyo prints here. But no, the reproductions they made were, were B-rank B to my taste. And we have two of this one. Uh, 
Now they're so long, it's hard to get a sense of the design. You know, if I zoom out, I guess. Can I, can I get it all in one piece here? You can't even really get it. Of course, in an era where they were trying to depict women as being tall and willowy, then yes, this genre was made to order. But there's crowds. You'll get two people, three people in one of the scenes. Sometimes you'll get a kabuki scene with people upstairs, downstairs, looking over. There's all kinds of stuff. If you look at the genre, hashire, very, very interesting. These would not have passed muster. If we were publishing these, these would not have, that first one would not have made it. The second one, maybe. But if anybody wants a challenge for your composition class, try this, eight to one as a ratio. The vertical ones are nearly always people, one or two people, and they also had the same thing in a horizontal format. It was common to have hashire published in this format, in a horizontal. I have a couple, I won't be showing them on stream because the horizontal format hashire were almost always women. Uh, they were, because it's horizontal, they were lying down and you know where the genre is going. So I won't be showing any of those here today or at tomorrow's show and tell either. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> And also, I don't know what they did with those. The vertical hashire clearly could be stuck on the post, on the wall. What do you do with a horizontal hashire? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, there you are. Eight to one is a standard classic size here. Okay, I'm out of here. Now, news. Today is Monday. There will be a normal stream here Thursday. I will be continuing with the carving as you saw this morning. I am also going to be doing some of this off camera, so you're not going to see every step of every stroke all the way. I will be maybe partway finished her body by the time Thursday comes around. And then Saturday, next Saturday stream will be from Ome, and we are going to do stream streaming. At the very least, we will see the same kind of thing we saw last time. You will see me in the bench and the camera will go outside to the river. But if I can fix it, if I can figure it out, I'm going to try and get the camera underwater. I shouldn't announce this because it may not happen, but I'm going to try and get the camera under the surface of the river. We've got an acrylic box. We've got some holes drilled, gaskets, leaks. Who knows what's going to happen? Next Saturday stream will be from all men. Thanks very much for watching. Let's pop up the outside. And it's going to be hot, hot. It already is hot, 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 hot. The ninja are closed today. They are out on some kind of special event. They were here this morning. When I came back from the pool at about 7.30, they had a little truck outside and they were packing all kinds of gear into the truck and they were all jumping in and boxes of uniforms. They seem to have an outside gig today. I know no more about it than that. So we were not going to see any ninja action here today. Mondays is usually a busy day for them. Today they are having some kind of event somewhere else. Okay, we're done. I've got to talk to Ayano-san to do the pre-flight on today's subscription billing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye for now.